All right, guys, so Loey the Legends, we've been all over the place in Freed Grant. What are you doing? <laughs> now, I wish... <sighs> I, I wish that it was easier to tell that food rots away because there's no real easy indicator in Age of Empires 2 that when you do this, the 100 food that each goat has is not what you receive. So I understand why Low Elo Legends don't hesitate to eat three goats at once, but the reality is there is some decay with Hunt even when you're eating it with one single villager. And don't tell me you're going to get the boar right now. <laughs> oh, no! Oh, God. Oh, just let everything decay. Oh, no. I'll get, yep, 35 food here, not eating. 50 food here, not eating it yet. And not to mention the decay earlier. Now we're going to break the boar. Fortunately, the villager didn't die. But Red is really off to a fast start here once to get all the food in the game. All right, so Freed Grant is here playing as the Sicilians, a new Civ. And then in the blue... Wow. Simple Gentleman has already placed a mill. And while I wouldn't... I'm not going to say that making a mill on a deer or four deer is bad. I would have liked to have seen that mill a little bit closer to the location of the deer. Interesting, though. I don't see Low Eagle Legends building a mill for deer before the berries too frequently. But that's definitely been the choice. And we have Malian's. Uh, Malian wood buildings are discounted a little bit, so you could potentially build more mills later on for a cheaper price. And the map is Ooh, Gold Rush. Lots of gold in the middle, only seven tiles of gold at each player's base. And the eventual goal is to control the middle, of course, and then win the game. Now, if you're watching Hidden Cup 4 Qualifiers, which starts this week, uh, or Hidden Cup 4 Main Event, which is mid-March, the Gold Rush version there is a lot different. Oh god, Red, you're stressing me out here. There we go. But, like, there's still food here! There's still food here. There's still food here. No, stop it. Didn't your mom tell you to finish your vegetables before you move on to the sweets? Ah, oh, man. At the eight minute mark, Red's going to have no food left. Uh, I, I need to get Spirit of the Law in here to do the math on, on how much has been lost. But the thing is, it, it's not as if Red is making his life easier doing it this early. He's actually making his life more difficult because he has to do all these different tasks. Maybe he's had one too many cups of coffee and he's just on overdrive right now. He needed one boar and two goats for the traditional family recipe. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, that's funny. Well, over here, uh, Blue would like to eat enemy scout and Blue cannot eat enemy scout, but has killed it. And oh my God, that lumber camp. Oh, I'll make it stop. Make it stop deleted, please, simple gentleman. Please be a gentleman and get that off of my screen. I, oh boy. I mean, there's lumber camps that are far from trees because they don't have the small tree mod. And then there's this. <laughs> Even if those trees are large for blue, that is still pretty far away from those trees. But hey, I'll tell you what. At least there's a lumber camp. And Blue has a scout, which Red does not. Things to improve on, of course. Red could uh, Red could calm down when it comes to eating all the food. And maybe Blue could fix the positioning of the mills and the lumber camps. But the players have two very different problems. And the game seems pretty even right now as we see Blue bringing in a boar... Close to the town center. Right. And good work from Blue. Should not lose the villager. And lots of food. Yummy, yummy. Hmm. 750 elo. Remember, there's wolves in the middle. So if they send villagers out there, the wolves could pounce on them. Okay, is this an intentional wolf rush? Or does Red not know that there's wolves in the middle? Oh, no. Oh, no. I imagine he might not know the map. And he thinks it's a good idea to drush because he's seen people do that before. So he's going to Dark Age rush with Militia. However, there's wolves in the middle. Now, one play that I've seen, and even happened in Hidden Cup 2, that's going to be in a video soon, where I talk about good games from Hidden Cups of the past to get hyped for Hidden Cup 4. Um, 
I have seen high level players use a militia to lure up all the wolves, send the militia over to the enemy base, and then just delete the militia so the wolves attack the enemy villagers. That's a strat. But this? Oh boy, and it's going to be a lot of militia too. This guy's on gold, so he can afford more militia. So red strategy is let food decay so you don't have as much of it long term. And then make a lot of militia in Dark Age. But maybe it's some type of a, I don't know, Drushfast castle, as they say at the high level. Let's see. I mean, it's not like he's going to lose all the militia. If he runs into four, he's still going to have, assuming he reacts, he's still going to have his militia around. Okay, now he's avoiding the middle, which funnily enough is going to take him to this wolf. Okay, red is off the races with the militia. Let me just turn on small trees again, if you guys don't mind. There we go. It's pretty cool with Capture Rage how you can change that in-game. Oh, boy. Oh, wow. So, really, I saw this earlier, but I wasn't expecting it at 750 ELO for some reason. Red is using the low ELO legend logic of this is neutral gold. This is gold that's hard to come by. Let's take that gold while we can and then if we get attacked, whatever, we have the gold at home. That's that's the low elo legend logic. However, I feel like it's much wiser and much safer. Collect the gold at home, make military with that gold, and then control the map so you can take this. <laughs> um, but yes, I, this is a relatively common strategy. Blue is now in feudal age. Let's see if blue reacts to this. Here come the militia. And red is... Walking by the mill. He does not know what's over here. Do, 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 do. Sneaky, sneaky. Sneaky, sneaky. And okay. And now see berries. And blue reacts. All right, good reaction time there from blue. Blue does have militia in the middle of the map, so I'm wondering if Blue will send the militia home to deal with this. And Red says, rah, we can't let that archery range make archers because that counters us, so Red's just going to attack the archery range. I mean, a drush or, you know, these militia, it's usually meant to just delay, not necessarily get kills. And I'd say that that has certainly been accomplished here. Blue only has three on food currently and cannot take berries when Blue needs food. So you don't necessarily need to get kills for a drush to pay off. And wow, we have stone mining as well as the wood and farm tech coming in for red first thing in feudal. Oh my god! He's making a dungeon! Hi YouTube. Okay, salutes and chat for YouTube already because I, I have not seen enough of Sicilians yet at a high level, much less low level. I don't know what people are doing. Now, I will say this. I have a business email which is on my YouTube, and it says, click this email if you would like to send a business email to T90 Official. In fact, the email itself has the word business in it. Apparently, for a lot of people out there, it is very important business to send me dungeon rushes to that email. So, I know they're out there, <laughs> because I receive more dungeon rushes to my email than I do actual business deals. <laughs> um, so thank you to those people out there. So I just have not seen one in Low Elo Legends yet. And Freed Grant here might need a little bit more on stone because it's 200 stone to make this and then 75 wood. And then you can create sergeants, which is a military unit, but sergeants can also build dungeons. So the idea is you like, you build the first one with Vils, then you eco heavy, and then you send sergeants out, and then maybe you make more of them. Now, also, I have to say, this is very deceiving building. It looks like it'd be really strong. It's only a thousand HP. It's not strong. It's just a little bit stronger than a tower, and it is a lot more expensive. Are sergeants good though? I do feel like they're a good unit when you have a lot of them with upgrades in late castle, but. I mean, for now, all they're really going to counter is Militia, so certainly they're going to be fine against Militia. Hmm. Presto, thank you for the six months. Lightsaber, I'm sorry I missed those gifted subs. You're awesome. 
And Blue's idea after seeing this, maybe Blue doesn't have the expansion. Maybe Blue doesn't know what this is. <laughs> but funnily enough, Blue's first reaction to this is just attack it. Which is not a great game plan. Man at arms, 45 HP. A sergeant, 45 HP. Man at arm base attack is 6. Sergeant base attack is 5, actually. Comparing the stats is interesting. It's really not that strong a unit right now. 21 villagers versus 29. Look at Red's TC idle time. Oh, man. That is rough. That is really bad. Then again, uh, I'm not sure if the eco balance and overall villager idle time is great for Blue. Like, look at Blue's villager idle time. So, he has created more villagers, but he's had more idle time. Hmm. Small head, I saw your gifted sub. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm behind on catching up here. <laughs> I saw you mention that I didn't see it as well. <laughs> but I, I just didn't find a moment to bring it up. And then we have forging for simple gentlemen. Remember that Sicilians do um, have a tech out of their castle called First Crusade. Did, did Blue just kill Vil here? I believe Blue Scout... Yes, okay. Blue Scout did snipe a villager. Oh, that was a weak Vil, too. Wow, I think that was intentional from Blue. Sneaky, sneaky. Red's gonna send a spear back there. Also rang the town bell, so these villagers went idle. These villagers went idle, and that doesn't bother me at all. Oh, well, Blue figures it's a good time to get the loom upgrade. That's, that's smart. And has a spearman over there. Meanwhile, Red's going out with a sergeant raid. Now, is this going to be a dungeon rush or a raid? Because an attack is strong. Building a dungeon and then attacking is even stronger. This is probably what's in my YouTube inbox. This right here. And honestly, it's great logic. All right? So if I don't cast your game for YouTube, YouTube, at least you can live vicariously through what Freed Grant is doing currently. You drop... The dungeon that will shoot some arrows and then you attack and then back it up with more dungeons and i think the biggest thing about this strategy is it will probably mentally overwhelm the enemy almost every time they just don't know what to do unless red decides to build another one instead of attacking <laughs> i feel like red really should have attacked there okay whoa blue made Five spearmen for one scout. Oh my god. He probably thought that Blue was going for a scout rush. Because it's it doesn't make sense for the enemy to attack with the starting scout. And made five spearmen to counter that scout. Whew. Okay. Du -du -du. Eight on food versus seven on food. I don't think this game's going to Castle Age anytime soon. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I don't want to be rude to Blue, especially because Blue's name is is Simple Gentleman. It's probably a really nice guy, but <laughs> that's even worse. I don't even understand. The large trees... Maybe he has the extra large trees mod enabled, because that still does not seem very efficient when you have the big trees. And we have another dungeon now going up. Remember, these things are 200 stone, 75 wood. It's not cheap. And then you have to make the units themselves. And Red hasn't lost many villagers. Or Blue, sorry, has not lost many villagers to this yet. Blue might want to try out Sicilians because Blue really likes tower defense. Maybe that are Koreans. And I think Blue is... Blue is zoning off this area with archers, which is smart. And then Blue might maybe make a tower here. Like, that's not bad logic. Zone it off, play defense, and then add a bunch of farms to go up to Castle Age. And funnily enough, Red doesn't know that Blue's in the middle. That's what's great. Red's like, oh my god. I've got the enemy trapped. I'm going to send this to T90. It's going to be great. I'm such a genius. I'm keeping it from the middle right now. <laughs> Look at Red's point of view as Red takes a big fight here. He genuinely thinks... That he is blocking Blue off from the middle. But Blue's just been in the middle the entire time. Oh, man. Okay, here come the sergeants. We just cleared up those archers. Are they strong enough to take out a tower here? Blue really has 
underreacted to a lot of these moments in this game. Okay, he's going to make a dungeon there. I think blue would be better off just making a, a counter tower immediately. And I don't see lower elo players knowing how to deal with this. It's so, especially if you're new to the game, like, what is this? This is so unique. Not understanding it is going to be the toughest part. And then you just garrison. Hmm. Now, what's funny is this dungeon's at 700 HP already. It doesn't seem like this tower should be able to beat the dungeon. But it kind of is. Now we have supplies for Simple Gentleman. Is he going to go for Man at Arms, maybe? Update. It looks like Blue might have got another kill with the scout, but the scout's gone down. And now the sergeants are repairing. Now that's that's different. That blue is not going to know how to react to that. And we'll attack the tower. Oh, panic mode, simple gentlemen, panic. If only he had a tower where the slumber camp was. Or maybe that wouldn't have helped too much. That tower should go down. There's still stone for more towers for simple gentlemen. He's still trying to make archers. Could honestly use villagers to attack this temporarily, but red Feeling like a beast right now, I'm sure, because the dungeon rush has worked. This hasn't been perfect, but it is working to to threaten blue and, and get blue to under and overreact constantly. It it reminds me of watching a tower rush, but worse. Because and blue really needs to get he doesn't have fletching, his archers don't have any upgrades. Whereas red's got the attack and the defense upgrades for his um sergeants here. But yeah, I remember watching low eagle players get tower rush, and they just don't know what to do. What is the plan for Simple Gentleman? I mean, Red, again, feels like a god. He believes that blue is not in the middle, which is not the case. Is anyone else kind of rooting for blue here? I imagine that Red would be so embarrassed if he were to later find out that blue's been here the whole time. Because there's not much stopping him from running in there says i will be when he stops making archers archers is a good move though archers is a good move the issue is that he doesn't have fletching red's got red's got armor and attack on his sergeant so i don't think archers is necessarily the worst thing it looks like he's gonna go man at arms and he's gonna go archers and maybe even scouts because he just got bloodlines he can attack this well actually there's 10 sergeants in there he might not remember that. Is Red trying to send archers into his buildings? I have to hand it to Red. He's got style. Look, look at this. This is tough to deal with. You repair it. Oh, man. Over here, the barracks is going to go down. Wait a second. Well, sergeants are going to go down as they're taking out the barracks. That's more like it. And oh, my God. Who said they didn't want archers? <laughs> Red, look at home! Look at your base! Stop microing for a second! Ah! Blue! Oh my god, what's happening? Red's at 25 villagers, man. He has no defense, he still hasn't reacted, and Blue just walked away, which is probably a safe thing, to be honest. 21 military for 7, though. This is an epic game. One person's macroing, the other person's going YOLO. One person has upgrades. And the other person's forgetting upgrades. What in the world is this? There's scouts over here. I mean, scouts will just wreck Red. I guess he does have some archers out there. Red, look at your base, my friend. What do you counter dungeon with? Remember, dungeons are really expensive. And it's only 1,000 HP. You could rush it down with villagers if you had... If they didn't have sergeants there. And sergeants aren't the cheapest unit either. So again, Red's issue has been lack of upgrades and lack of numbers with military. But this has worked out so well. And you've got it all oh, freed Grant. I mean, look at his TC idle time. That says it all. He's so focused on the micro and the fights. That he's not going back home. And so he fails to pick up on this. I don't think dungeons are very strong. Just to put that out there for people who are asking. I don't think they're an OP unit. Red 
just like <laughs> this is such a good game because this this game here completely sums up low elo legends does it not you have the yolo players who go for crazy strats but never look back at their base and then you have the people who do the right things with the economy but when they get pressured they have brain farts and they don't know what to do it's a perfect encapsulation of what low elo legends is all about right here and i think red has just realized <laughs> where's that uh, spongebob meme two hours later i think red noticed but i can't tell because he's got 1500 wood and refuses to make more farms so no nope, nope, he's microing here okay and blue is now on the way to castle age this game i have to hand it to blue it has not been easy for him and so many people would have resigned at this elo the other thing about this elo is that it's full of quitters they get stressed out and they say nope i'm out of here i'm gonna go watch a youtube video now or i'm gonna go play against the ai this is too stressful for me no thank you um and despite the consistent losses Blue is, is hanging in here. On the way to Castle Age. Currently raiding red with scouts. I mean, I've seen people idle their TCs. I've seen people forget about their own eco. Freed Grant is just on another level. If I could... If there was an ELO scale, if there was a rating scale for people who didn't look at their own economy... Number one ELO at 2,600 would be Huang. Number two ELO would be Freed Grant. My goodness. Man at Arms attacking the dungeon over here. I mean, that's going to go down. This unit's going to die. But as Freed Grant protects one dungeon, another goes down. It almost seems like it anyways. What's the plan for Blue. Oh, wow. Red's repairing this. Red is really good at this, I have to say. Repairing the dungeon. And then the other ones are attacking. The lack of food for Blue is a problem. He's made so many men-at-arms, and he just continues to lose them. Oh, wait a second. Did Red notice? Okay, Red is sending units through the middle now. And I don't know if he's picked up on it himself, but he's at least walking through where Blue is on gold. So it should dawn on him, and Red's now going to make a TC in the middle. Or, why Red? Why did I say that? Blue. That's a good move. And Knights would definitely be the way to go here. Knights and Rams would be the way to go. Blue fighting off that Sergeant. Blue. If he could just take a moment to play some farms somewhere safely, that would be good. Just, just think about your situation a little bit here, simple gentleman. You need food for knights. You need rams for the dungeons. You need nothing else. Even the tower is not needed here. So many villagers have gone down to this. So feels like it should be more, but again, the dungeon is is a building that is not quite as strong as you would expect when looking at it. Oh my god. <laughs> Grant. Grant. Look at your base, Grant! Your, your town center! Salutamo. It, the thing that can garrison. What the? Alright, alright. He's, he's too busy dealing with this, sending archers into this. Basically playing tower, not tower defense, but tower offense. Grant! Like, Blue is expecting him to garrison. Okay, whoa, he did. Oh no, he rang the town bell. Oh god, yeah. So much more is going idle now. I think Red is starting to stress out Imagine himself. It seems like this dungeon, I don't know if he right-clicked it or, or what, but it seems like it's prioritizing the house there, so the archer is currently taking out the dungeon. Only, uh, oh, never mind. 589 more hits needed there. Okay, you rang the bell. Can you unring it, maybe? There you go. Unring it. See. Adding more villagers now. He'll probably look forward to his dungeons again. He does have 10 sergeants in here. If he were to attack here, 
That's 20 villagers killed, and that makes this a very close game. Okay, fun fact. You see this farm here? Um, I actually can't go in and see... Capture H doesn't show me. Oh my god. What the... Oh no, blue. Oh no, simple gentleman. Don't... If red notices this, and blue doesn't react properly, blue could get this castle denied, and blue could just end up calling it here. Also red is tilting, cause he expected blue to resign by now, I bet. The modded says red is probably tilting because he expected blue to resign by now. I can see that. What is... What is red doing? I, I don't see him doing much. And he doesn't notice this. Oh, he noticed it. Okay, all you need to do, Blue, garrison your town center. Garrison your town center and you're fine. But if you don't garrison your town center, you're going to take unnecessary losses here. Red is coming in. Okay, town center garrisoned. Red can't be anywhere close to that town center if it's garrisoned. So you kind of have to play this game for a little bit. Blue, don't resign. That's at 82%. Do not quit. Simple gentlemen, you can do this. Okay, red's back inside. Blue, back out of the TC. 85%, 87%, 90%. That should go up. Wow. What a crazy game. Okay, and the castle will take this out, no problem. Wait, will it though? Or is this at the base? He's getting a university for murder holes. <laughs> he just, he just stumbled upon the same realization. He's like, because that's touching, I can't shoot that because it's a minimum range. So let's scramble up that university. Now, I forget how much murder holes cost. I think it's wood and food though. Actually, no, it costs some stone as well, right? Murder holes. So let's see if he has to use the market. Wait, what the? Tigui? So now his town centers shoot arrows without having to be garrisoned. That's not what I was expecting to see him go for out of the castle. Uh, and he's researched crossbowmen, so he still doesn't have a single blacksmith upgrade for his archers, but he's going to have crossbowmen at least, which is, which is good. And he's microing over here, which is also good, but, you know, skirmishers will be problem problematic if he doesn't get upgrades. Um, still haven't seen murder holes because he can't afford murder holes. And I think Red, as he's fighting underneath this TC, he needs to, to macro. Or, or just use the market at this point. Get to Castle Age. But maybe it's too little too late for Red. 32 villagers. And the blue is 51, but blue has had two and a half hours of villager idle time. Also, there hasn't been a single point where any of these players hit over 10 farms. Now, Crossbowman should make quick work of this, plus the Castle Fire. Castle Fire being the big thing. Okay. 47-minute feudal age. How much do you guys want to bet that Freed Grant probably has done this time and time again with the new Civ? If we look at his profile, I bet you he's picking Sicilians a lot. And as someone mentioned in the resub, I think it's extremely likely that people would tilt and then resign early against that type of a rush. And if you're able to weather the storm, you can beat him because he doesn't have a lot of eco behind it. And now we have, is that Long Swordsman? That is Long Swordsman now for Simple Gentleman. And Arson, so he wants to make infantry. And Long Swordsman should wreck all these buildings. Long Swordsman should take Red out of the game. Blue using three crossbowmen. Got the most effective crossbow rate I've ever seen. And the few Age units are still doing okay for Red. Red, make some farms. <laughs> Please. <laughs> make a few farms or something. Same with blue, and this lumber camp is probably the first lumber camp I haven't that hasn't made me want to gouge my eyes out from blue. Well played, simple gentleman. Monastery in the middle now, maybe to heal up, maybe to get conversions, I'm not too sure. Uh, Rams on the way out of the siege workshop, all right, blue's kicked it into overdrive, officially. Red has played Sicilians in six of his last seven games. He won three of the six, interesting. 
And I bet you in those games that he won, he probably had crap eco, but everyone got overwhelmed and just resigned. <laughs> but honestly, do you think red wins this game if he knew that blue was in the middle? I honestly am not sure what blue would have done if his middle would have been spotted. Like, that gold has been really important. Granted, the rest of the attack hasn't been that impressive from red, but just the, the thought process might have been hurt for blue. He would think, I'm surrounded. I don't have access to the middle. I'm dead and just resign. And he's certainly taking his good old time here, taking out the dungeons, but he'll do that. I think there's a slight chance for red from here, but that requires him to go to Castle Age, and that requires him to have a little bit of luck with a castle drop in the middle. And the knights come in finally. We've been waiting to see these knights, and they mop up the archers. The two rams here will take this out. Geez, even the longsword over here has been doing work to this, and I think red has to think of another game plan. And apparently that game plan is farm a little bit. Poof. Uh, T90, what's the best matchup versus Indians, and why don't people pick that on slopes? Uh, I have a game going up to YouTube. It was Vikings versus Indians, MBL versus Leary. That game will be up. Uh, well, I'll have that and the Bay game up, and it kind of talks. It kind of shows the strength of Mongols on Bay and the strength of Indians on slopes. But there's a lot of picks out there. I think can counter Indians on that map, and I'm excited to see what people do for the qualifiers. Like, Vikings is is very solid civilization there. Japanese, even Celts, even Goths, those civilizations could all be very good. You could also go for a Cav Civ yourself if you wanted to go that route. Vietnamese, yeah, Vietnamese could kind of work on that. I don't think it's the best for that map in particular. But any strong archer, like, archer halb civilization can tend to do quite good. Or siege halb civilization can do quite good against Indians. What about slabs? I personally like slabs there. It's just a question of, is it better than some of the other sieves? I'm proud of blue. I mean, we sit here as red is on his way to the Imperial Age. Or, <laughs> sorry, it's, it's a 55-minute game. I shouldn't have assumed. Red is on his way to Castle Age. 55 minutes in. <laughs> Woo! Uh, you would think it'd be imp, but it's not. Um, Blue has made a variety of different units. He's made rams, he's made longswords, he's made jibettos, he's made monks, he's made crossbows, he's made camels, he's made knights. He's gotten, he's even teching into elite skirm. He might not know what to make, but simple gentleman was not treated like a gentleman. He was treated like scum of the earth with this crazy all-in aggressive overwhelming strategy from red. And while red seems to be the more aggressive of the two, and with Castle Age upgrades, I think could somehow do this, it does seem like blue has weathered the storm. And we'll see the knights mop up these skirmishers. And blue in a fine position, I'd just say maybe get a castle in the middle and just commit to something, you know? Get knight upgrades and make more of them. Knights could be awkward when there's that many spearmen out there, and maybe that's why blue is made so much. And then longsword would probably be the better play. The Beto, a helpful infantry unit. Uh, castle for blue. It said he had the stone for a castle. Oh! Aha! You're gonna dungeon rush me? Well, I'm gonna castle rush you, you fool. Nice castle there from blue. I don't love it, I don't hate it. It's certainly not bad, uh, because I think it will be in range of the gold, so that's very good for Gold Rush. The concern would be if Red were to swoop in and take this hill right now, then he'd have nothing. But it doesn't seem like that's going to happen. Just as something you got to keep in mind. Red could go for First Crusade, but Red's economy is just garbage. Interestingly enough, though, we say that, and Red has already researched Handcart, Heavy Plow, and Bowsaw. So the Wood Farm and General Eco Upgrade. Whereas this entire game, Simple Gentleman, has not even had Horse Collar. But he's going to get Treadmill Crane, so his Monastery builds faster. So, 
Blue really has his priorities straight right now. <laughs> What's up, Green Bear Brewing? Welcome. I just love low elo legends, man. There's so many silly things that happen, but you know, for the most part, the logic there is some logic. I'm not saying the logic is sound. Spirit says 16 farms before horse collar. Well, if 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 Spirit of the Law says that, he would be wrong because it depends. The guy had like 600 food, 600 wood. That's he wasn't spending it. Horse collar away, my friends. Horse collar away. You can't just put a number to something and say. Say it's uh it's the best way to do it in Age of Empires. It's not how it works. Hmm. Well, Blue just lost his whoa, whoops, I don't know what happened there. Blue just lost his Gabetos against the dungeon. Um How much does First Crusade? Do you guys know? I don't know how much that research is. Another castle drop from Blue. Well, he's gonna make some long swordsmen here. He also has this relic. He also has 67 villagers versus 36. All right. A dungeon to deny the castle? I Honestly, that's your best play, Red. And he obviously has that hotkey. I don't have a hotkey for that, by the way. Does anyone know what the default is? I always have to click it. Just in case it gets Sicilians. Okay, it's what? 300 food, 600 gold. Yeah, it's not, not very cheap. Plus, it's going to be tough to change his position. Blue's going to get the castle up. Castle always went against the dungeon. and All right. Red is the type of player who will not resign easily. The type of person who would go forward like that and play the game <laughs> like this is also the type of player who will fight on to the final unit. <laughs> or call the GG shortly, I suppose. Absolutely no surprise that Red still thinks he has a chance. Villagers? What are villagers? I don't need villagers. Two castles on my face? Whatever. Murder holes for Red! What does that do for you, though? The Maganel goes down. He, he doesn't know. I guess he's going to try and make skirms because he doesn't have access to gold. And he's thinking skirmishers. The trash unit that just costs wood and food. So it's better than nothing. That said, Long Swordsman is excellent against that. And Blue has already made Long Swordsman. Simple Gentleman is going to win this game. Red has a good strat, though, I have to say. Good as in entertaining. I'm not sure how successful it will be as he tries to rank up, if he tries to rank up. The villagers going down. The game ends, and Freed Grant gives it up. Yeah, we said it a lot over the last 10 minutes because it kind of felt like this game was over. But respects and salutes, please, to Mr. Simple Gentleman. That was impressive defense. Okay, let me rephrase that. The defense in and of itself was horrifying at times. But the fact that Blue was able to get the result <laughs> was great. Because he stuck to the game plan. He continued to focus on his economy, and he didn't choke. Exactly. He didn't freak out. He realized, I'm in Castle Age. He's in Feudal Age. Yes, I'll lose a few more villagers, but I will still be fine. Or maybe the whole time he was thinking that he was dead. I don't know, but he ended up getting the win. As for Red, though, how many of you think that if Red had a little bit more multitasking, that he would have killed Blue? I personally do. This was extreme lack of multitasking. Archers without fletching, killing farmers directly underneath the TC, and he didn't garrison. I mean, if he pays attention to his starting eco a little bit more, I think he'll be in a better spot. And the idle TC time... <laughs> I mean, it's not like Blue was keeping his TCs creating all that much. It was The game was one hour and four minutes. Actually, specifically, it was one hour, three minutes and 59 seconds. Blue's TCs were idle... One hour, four minutes, and four seconds. So he had five additional seconds of idle time compared to game time. Of course, he did have two TCs, though. But my point is, is if Red could have managed that one TC eco even 25-30% better, then I think that it would have been an even game going 
towards faster cast leads for him, and and he could have he could have done a better job and uh, you know taken control of different areas. Big thing though was the fact he didn't scout it early. He probably thought that he had blue trapped, and blue is in the middle the whole time. There's the food difference again. Not a big difference there. Seven food, seven food difference. Uh, wood, there was a difference. Stone, there was a difference. I wonder how Red spent that. And then, wow. Um, yeah, gold in the middle definitely helps on Gold Rush. 14,000 gold for the simple gentleman. Yeah, and, and there's the uptime. What a ridiculous game. I can't wait to look at the timeline here in a moment. 1120 feudal versus 1336. 50 <laughs> 57 minute castle age. Against 37, and that was very much a game for a while. What in the world? Two relics for blue. I, I guess the timeline doesn't really show the struggles that blue had. Because the timeline doesn't show the amount of idle time that blue had with his villagers. <laughs> Woo! Well, um, I think that's going to hit YouTube at some point, And I'm trying to do a slightly better job at saying these things. Uh, because so many people who are currently watching on Twitch came in and... Um, you were once YouTube viewers and then occasionally stop by the stream or are always on the stream. The situation is different for everyone. But we do Low Evil Legends on Tuesdays. Typically starts around noon Eastern, 17 GMT, and lasts for about five to six hours. For those that might potentially want to stop by, um, I will be switching up times. But the next couple weeks are a little awkward because Hidden Cup 4 is taking priority on all these different days. But that is the plan, just in case people on YouTube want to stop by. Um... YouTube, we don't think you smell. There are a few people who, around this time, will say, YouTube, you smell. If you do smell, you smell wonderful. And you would really increase the aroma here, Twitch. All right. 